Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Robert Puff. Discipline. I think for a lot of people, it's almost like a dirty word. Society is constantly telling me what to do, that I need to work, that I have to drive back and forth to work and follow the rules, that I have to go to school and finish these courses in order to succeed in life. I just want to come home at the end of the day, relax, and enjoy the last few remaining hours that I have before I go to bed, wake up the next morning, and do it all over again. For many of us, we're just tired. We don't want to think about discipline, things we need to do to make our lives go better. We just want to relax, enjoy life, and take those few moments that we get and say, thank you, that's enough. But then the years begin to wear on us, and we notice that we're just not as happy anymore. And the choices that we've made make it so that we have maybe more time, but the time that we enjoy is less. I want to apologize. I'm not trying to paint a bleak picture. I'm just trying to paint a picture that a lot of people follow because they really do not like the word discipline. It's hard. Life already has so many challenges. They don't want to add others. They just want to relax at the end of the day and hope tomorrow might be better. But why that journey doesn't tend to work is because we are all day long affecting our minds, our thoughts, our behavior by the choices that we make. In many ways, even an undisciplined life is disciplining itself to be that way. Every choice we make has a ripple effect. And when we realize that, we begin to say, okay, I do want to find happiness in my life. I do want to find more joy and peace throughout my day so that when I do lay my head down at the end of the day for rest, I'll look back on it and say, that was a good day. So how then do we discipline our minds for happiness? The first and foremost thing we have to do and acknowledge is that every choice we make, every thought we have, everything that we watch, Everything that we expose ourselves to, every conversation we have, matters. Our minds are much like our stomachs. They process everything that we're exposed to. So if we eat a lot of fruits and vegetables that are organic, our bodies are probably going to feel pretty good. If we expose ourselves to beautiful things, positive things, loving things, kindful things, our minds are going to become healthier. The first step, and in many ways, one of the most important things that we have to do is be aware of or begin to notice all the things that we're exposing ourselves to and thinking about and doing throughout the day. Because if we want to discipline our minds for happiness, we have to acknowledge that everything matters. So we can't change something unless first we know what we're doing. And if we're doing the good things, we keep doing them. For example, let's say our three best friends are supportive, loving, kind, then we're going to hang on to them very tightly and keep them in our lives. But then we begin to notice what we're listening to throughout the day, what music we listen to, what we watch on television, what we listen to on the radio, what we listen to on podcasts, what we scroll on our phone, all the images, all the short videos that we may be watching. And then we ask ourselves, Are these feeding my soul? Are these adding to my sense of happiness and peace of mind? Or are they doing the opposite? Because again, we have to acknowledge that everything matters. And that's where discipline plays such a big role in our happiness. Because people who have disciplined themselves into a happy life existence are very careful what they expose themselves to. They have an aversion. They have an allergic reaction to negativity and they stay away from it. If they see an animal being cruelly treated, it makes them sick inside. If they watch one human hurting another, it makes their heart so sad. And if they see something beautiful, something loving, a loving act of kindness, their hearts melt in joy because they know that these images are affecting them. Now the tricky part is, yes, we do expose ourselves to a lot of things all day long, but we also expose ourselves to our thoughts, the thoughts that go through our mind all day long. 
And these are trickier because they're often like background music that we don't even notice is playing anymore. But it's playing, and it's playing all day long. But it's being reinforced by what we expose ourselves to, conversations that we have, what we watch and listen to. So it's kind of like a dance, a dance between what we expose ourselves to and our thoughts replaying it throughout the day. And this is where awareness is so critical because once we're aware of that, we can change it. I mean, we all know how addicting YouTube videos can be, particularly ones that have a lot of violence or craziness in them. Or the TikTok shorts, they are so interesting. But we have to ask ourselves, are they feeding our souls or are they sucking the life out of our happiness souls? Because they can do that because everything matters. And once we acknowledge that, then we say, well, what am I exposing myself to all day long? Because that's what I'm going to get at the end of the day and throughout the day. And when we really get this, we're going to be a lot more careful about the choices and the activities that we engage in throughout the day. And that's where discipline is so helpful because discipline makes us or requires us or encourages us to do things that are good for ourselves. We may set an alarm at 6 a.m. to get out and go for a walk, go to the gym. We may, at the end of the day, come home and meditate for 30 minutes. We may, on the weekends, go for a hike in nature because we discipline ourselves to do that. When it's time to do it, we may not feel like doing it, but we do it because we've decided this is the choice that we're gonna make and we want to be happy. People that are happy learn to discipline their mind. And the truth of it is, we all want to be happy. But here's what catches us. We can be aware of what we're doing. We can want to do things that we know are good for us. But then what happens is, we make a mistake. We don't behave in a disciplined manner. We indulge in something that we know is not good for our minds. And then what do we do? We beat ourselves up emotionally. We call ourselves names. We say we're an idiot, we're stupid. We attack ourselves. And guess what? That reinforces the bad choices because now we're disciplined in our mind to make poor choices because we're telling ourselves we're an idiot. Well, what do idiots do? Idiotic things. So again, our thoughts matter. Exposing ourselves to negative thoughts matters. If someone were following us and calling us stupid and fat and ugly and just being very cruel to us, it's going to wear us down. And sadly, with time, we'll begin to believe it. So how do we break this cycle? Okay, we realize that we've done something that we wish we hadn't. We look at that behavior. We're honest, but we say, okay, I made a mistake. I will learn from this. I will keep growing from this. And if I have to repeat this over and over again, I'm just not going to give up because habits are just that, habits. So if I begin to, each and every time I make a mistake, first treat myself with kindness, not giving myself permission to do it again, but saying, okay, I made a mistake and this is what I can do next time. And then with time, I begin to make those choices that are good for my soul, good for my mind, and then they will become the new habit because a disciplined mind for happiness is just that, doing things all day long, which feed the soul goodness, happiness, kindness. And the effects of that is a good, happy life. We're all capable of that. The only thing keeping us from it is bad habits we have in place. So if we discipline ourselves to change these habits, both externally, what we expose ourselves to, and internally by watching and changing our thoughts when necessary, then what we'll find is our lives will begin to improve. We can't do it overnight. It takes time because it took us time to get where we're at. But if we work at it, we'll find that our lives will get better. And you know, one of the ways I really discovered how important this was is that I enjoy going to quiet places where I can be still for a day, a weekend, or a week. And places that allow me to do that are monasteries. They're very quiet, they take care of all my needs, they feed me, they provide shelter for me, and I can just not say a word for an entire week. But there are people there, monks or nuns, that live their life in this type of practice. 
And what I discovered was they are very much more peaceful than the average person. And sometimes I meet monks or nuns whose lives are just beautiful. There is so much at peace and tranquility just rests in their hearts. Now, I'm in no way advocating that we join a monastery. I have no plans to. But what I do recommend is disciplining our minds so that our lives look somewhat like these lives do, in the sense that things that we are being exposed to are healthy, are good, and we get rid of the things that aren't. And we can do that wherever we live, whatever is happening in our lives. I was once staying in a monastery in England, and I was talking to one of the monks. We were talking for a while. We were having a conversation. And he said, you know, even though I live in this monastery and my life is very much routine, in many ways you're more disciplined than I am. I don't say that to brag at all. My point about it is we can have disciplined lives and have beautiful lives wherever we are. It's really not about the environment that we're in. It's about choices that we make in the environments that we're in. Now, I do want to preface that. I do know some of us right now listening to this podcast are in very challenging environments. So we would discipline ourselves to get out of it as soon as we can. I know it may not be easy, but that would be our goal. Our goal would be, okay, how do I begin to remove myself from this toxic, very unhealthy environment? But then when we are more in control of our lives, we decide each and every day how to make our lives, our minds, more disciplined for happiness because it does take discipline. That truly is the point of this talk. If we want to find happiness in our lives, we have to discipline our minds to be in that peaceful, tranquil place. And we're going to do that by paying attention to what we expose ourselves to externally and paying attention to what we are thinking internally, and then make choices that reinforce the positive, the loving, the peacefulness that we are seeking in our lives, and realizing that every choice we make matters. When we do that, what we'll find is, with kindness, with gentleness, with patience, that our lives will begin to improve. We do need to, as I keep saying, expose ourselves to good things things that teach us how to do this. This is the number one reason I create this happiness podcast, so it can give us tools to have beautiful lives, but we have to steep ourselves in things like this. We can all day long, because of all the wonderful things out there, listen to and reinforce things that work for us by exposing ourselves to good thoughts, good ideas, good images, what we'll find is our lives will get better. By being in relationships that are kind, that are supportive, we'll find our lives will get better. By finding jobs that bring us joy and happiness, we'll find that when we wake up in the morning, we'll wake up with a smile in our hearts. But discipline is one of the key components of having a happy life. We can all develop that discipline. It's just a habit. But once we develop it, it is one of the key components of having a happy life. May we all continue down this path of happiness and someday wake up and say, I love my life. Thank you for joining me on the Happiness Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, please go to happinesspodcast.org. And until next time, Accept what is, love what is.